guy. He's a blogger known as the International Libertarian. He was the guest speaker of the year for Citizens for Liberty, Darren Wolf. I like to I like to mix it up. We have conservatives, Democrats, Republicans, Libertarians, everybody. Thank you, Adam. Thank you all for coming out. Great to see you all carrying a little liberty around with you. Well, Dan, you ruined my speech. I was going to talk about Venezuela. But, I used to live there. So anyways, I can make my speech shorter now because Dan already covered it. So, well, I'll just jump right into something else. I'm going to talk about something that's a little unusual for me, which is the Constitution. We're here, this is a Second Second Amendment Awareness Rally, so let's talk about that. The Second Amendment is actually part of a line that runs through the Constitution. It starts well into the beginning of it and runs right past the Second Amendment. And that line starts, well, let me start with the Second Amendment. It is a well-regulated militia being necessary for the security of a free state. And let me stop there. I want to look at that part of the Second Amendment, the part that a lot of people overlook. The line starts Article 1, Section 8, Clause 12, to support, and this is the powers of Congress, to, to raise and support <laughs> armies, but no appropriation of money to that use shall be for a longer term than two years. Remember, the Anti-Federalists didn't want a standing army. They wanted Congress to have to consider every two years whether there should even be an army. What was to defend the United States? But the militia. We go on, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 15 gives Congress the power to provide for calling forth the militia to execute the laws of the Union, suppress insurrections, and repel invasions. That is the law enforcement power of the federal government. Not to have the FBI, the ATF, the Securities Exchange Commission, and all the, uh, the Internal Revenue Service. We can't forget they shouldn't have that one. It's not to have all those things. It says here, militia to execute the laws of the union. That's all it says. Number 16, uh, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 16, gives Congress the power to provide for organizing, arming, and disciplining the militia and for governing such part of them as may be employed in the service of the United States. So the federal government is supposed to help the states have state militias. Instead, in 1903, with something called the Dick Act, they destroyed the militia and substituted, sort of substituted a National Guard. It also says in Article 2, Section 2, Clause 1, this is presidential powers. The president shall be commander-in-chief of the Army and the Navy of the United States and the militia of the several states when called into actual service of the United States. Making very clear the militias are supposed to be state organizations, not federal, not a reserve, not an army-type reserve like the National Guard. Well. We then get to the Second Amendment itself, which I don't need to read again. I'm sure all of you are very familiar with it. Every line that runs through the Constitution ends in one place, and that is the Tenth Amendment. The powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. Then we go back. Remember I said, what's the militia for? To execute the laws of the Union. We see that that line is broken. We see that our rights are trampled. What we see is that the Constitution has failed. We, the Constitution has failed. I know a lot of you don't want to hear this. But we tried, we really did. But think about it, the Constitution either authorizes the government we now have, or it has failed to prevent it. But that's a, that's a real reality we have to face. The Constitution has become a means of controlling us, not a means of controlling the government. Think about it. When you, when you cling to the idea that we can vote people into office to make things better, to restore the Constitution, to restore the Republic, you stay under control. 
You keep obeying laws. You keep yep. paying taxes. Yep. When you thank that officer, or well, wherever he went, when you thank that officer for his service, you're thanking him for tyranny. Yep. 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 Oh, okay, great. <laughs> Police state. Okay. I was expecting tomatoes for some of those things. Yeah. Oh, when you sit, well, I would like to quote the same speech that Johan quoted from Patrick Henry, where he talked about what was wrong with the Constitution. I want to emphasize the title of the speech is, Shall Liberty or Empire Be Sought? And Patrick Henry was arguing against the adoption of the Constitution at the Virginia Ratifying Convention. Here's what he had to say. There will be no checks, no real balances in this government. What can avail your specious, imaginary balances, your rope-dancing, chain-rattling, ridiculous, ideal checks and contrivances? It is on a supposition that your American governors shall be honest that all the good qualities of this government are founded. But its defective and imperfect construction puts it in their power to perpetrate the worst of mischiefs, should they be bad men. And sir, would not all the world blame our distracted folly in resting our rights upon the contingency of our rulers being good or bad? Show me that age and country where the rights and liberties of the people were placed on the sole chance of their rulers being good men without a consequent loss of liberty. I say that the loss of that dearest privilege has ever followed with absolute certainty every such mad attempt. And it happened here too. Let me ask a question of this crowd. When do you say Molo Mave? When do you say Molo Mave? Every time I get the chance. When do you say it? When no cops are around. Take them. Take what? When powers of government come to take your weapons, you tell them, come and take me. Okay, if you're going to wait until they come for your guns, it's too late. You may as well just turn them in. They've already won. If you give them the power to tax you, any tax, you're giving them the power to confiscate your money. Now you have a principle there. They can confiscate things from you. If you give them the power to do things like eminent domain. Now I know a lot of people in this crowd don't like eminent domain. It certainly is the mainstream out there. Matter of fact, I found out while we were fighting eminent domain in Phoenixville that eminent domain comes from two Latin words that mean supreme lordship. Yeah. I don't think they exercise any supreme lordship over me. I don't think you guys uh, feel that way either. But we have taxation, we have eminent domain, we've established a principle. They can confiscate from us. And if we allow them to confiscate anything, they can confiscate everything. We don't have a leg to stand on when we say, you can't take our guns. Let me close with an idea from the 19th century libertarian anarchist, Lysander Spooner. He wrote, every man who puts money into the hands of a government, so-called, puts into its hands a sword which will be used against himself to extort more money from him and also to keep him in subjugation to its arbitrary will. We might be able to achieve liberty one day, but it's only going to happen when the tax man comes to you and says, I want your money, and then you say, Molo Lave!